Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, we're back again with another installment of Rebuilding God's Temple, Returning to God. And uh, today we're going over um, chapter 6 in the book of Nehemiah. Uh, again, remember the Zerubbabel, Ezra, and Nehemiah are all types of the Holy Spirit. Uh, and they were sent back to oversee a specific phase of returning Israel to God. Um, Zerubbabel rebuilding the temple, Ezra returning them to a place of sanctification and purity, and then Nehemiah uh, returning them to God's social and economic order. <clears throat> and in Nehemiah, I, I believe that we're, we're, the church itself is, is going through this, these phases now. Uh, I believe that, uh, you know, we are, uh, We've already we're, we've already learned for the most part that we are God's temple, uh, not a building or anything like that, but us ourselves. That the Holy Spirit resides in us, and we are the temple. Uh, we've we've learned that Zerubbabel part for the most part. I'm not going to say there's some out there who don't get it because there are always some, uh, uh, and that we're now in the Ezra phase where we are being brought to a place of purity and sanctification and holiness, that God's cleansing us and, and making us the spotless bride, that he's uh, working in us and, and, and refining us to, to be that, that spotless bride. Um, I believe we're, we're kind of in the end area of that right now. Uh, I don't know exactly exactly what part of the end, but I believe we're in the end, and we're getting ready to come into the Nehemiah part, uh, restoring order to God's social and economic structures. Um, you know, God God did not like unjust scales, and we live in a society, in a world of many, many in unjust scales. And I, I believe he's, he's getting ready to, to teach us about that and how to restore order to his just scales and that we're coming to that really really soon pardon me had a little bit of a coughing fit there but yeah we're coming back to that where god i think believe we're coming into that soon where he's going to start showing us and teaching us how to bring order into to our lives not only our lives but the world about um the just scales but today we're going to be talking about uh, like I said, Nehemiah chapter 6, and uh, and here we learn about discerning the discernment of the adversary's strategies. Uh, the greatest weapon we have against the enemy's tactics is discernment. Uh, and discernment is simply a wisdom and insight that comes from the Holy Spirit. It's a way of determining a true nature of a situation, person, or thing. It's like your intuition. Uh, and John sixteen thirteen, when the Spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. So, Holy Spirit will guide us and lead us into all truth. And if you get into a situation where you, he, he will let you know if this is a godly situation or if it's an ungodly situation. Uh, I have that happen to me on a daily basis. Is this of God? Is this not of God? <clears throat> I mean, we're, we're told to uh, test the spirits, and I'll read that scripture later on down. I have it later on down. But uh, the first part is protecting your city, Nehemiah 6.1. Now it came to pass that Sambalat and Tobiah and Geshem and the Arabian and the rest of the enemies of uh, Israel heard that they had finally finished the wall and there were no more breaches left although they hadn't put the gates, uh, the doors on the gates yet. So the wall's done. The restoration of Jerusalem's walls is finished. However, the gates remained unfinished. Uh, they still needed doors. Uh, so the gates are wide open. Without a doubt, though, I'm sure he had gatekeepers stationed around those gates, uh, patrols, guards, to keep them safe. And there were 12 gates in Jerusalem. So a gate gives access to the city, and it's a seat of power and authority and influence. And we learn this in 1 Chronicles 9.22. I apologize for that little skip. 
didn't have that pulled up, so I want to get that pulled up. Uh, 1 Chronicles 9.22, all these which were chosen to be porters in the gates were 212, and they were reckoned by the genealogy in their villages, whom David and Samuel the seer did ordain in their set service, uh, specific gatekeepers around the gates. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, um, I like John Bunyan. Uh, I'm sure you've read them. His Pilgrim's Progress, uh, the Holy War, and such and such. Uh, but and John Bunyan illustrates in the, the need for a spiritual gatekeeper uh, in the book Holy War. Now, in the allegory, he likens humanity to a city. You, you are a city. And he calls it Mansoul. And they have five gates. And these, they were impregnable. And no one could ever be forced them open and go through them or come in them or leave them without the express consent of those who lived within the city. And those, the names of the gates were eye gate, ear gate, mouth gate, nose gate, and field gate. The five senses. Hearing, seeing, speaking, smelling, and feeling. So those are the those are the five gates we have. Now uh, our five senses they li link directly to our soul, and our greatest weakness. But if guarded properly with discernment and control, they can be a great asset to us as well. You know, what you see will do things. Um, I was addicted to pornography for a very long time since the age of about 11, 12 years old for a very long time, even after salvation. Uh, and um, it messes you up. You must guard what you see. It messes you up. Even now, if I see a commercial or watching a show and there's a flash of skin, it will send my brain back into images I don't want to see. And you have to be so extremely careful. Or what you hear, things you hear, things you speak, life and death are in the power of the tongue. A smell can bring back memories and feeling, touching. My goodness, that can really do things to you. These gates must be guarded and we must use discernment to guard them. You know, uh, things you say, things you hear, things you see kind of hard to, to, to stop smells, uh, you know, but uh, when, it, when it activates that memory, you got to learn to take it under, under control. Uh, in, uh, in, the, uh, in the notes on my webpage, I have links to uh, three sections for the eye, ear, and mouth gate uh, to give all kinds of scripture on them. Uh, you can go check that out. It's uh, brianlnack.com uh, and just look for the discernment uh, one. Now, discernment of the adversary's plans. Uh, in Nehemiah 6, 2 through 4, that Sambalot and Geshem sent unto me, saying, Come, let us meet together in some one of the villages in the plain of, oh, let's say, oh no. Oh no. Uh, but they thought to do me mischief. And I sent messengers unto them, saying, I am doing a great work, so that I cannot come down. Why should the work cease, whilst I leave it and come down to you? Yet they sent unto me four times after this sort, and I answered them after the same manner. So, when they can't get through you, when they can't get through your walls anymore, when straight-on attacks are not working, when you've got your defenses up and they know they're not going to get through them, they're going to come at you sideways. Come, let's talk, let's have it out, let's let's get all this hashed out, and let's bring a peace between us. Let's work out our differences, so it's all water under the bridge. Um, but it's going to be a trap. And Nehemiah recognized that, discernment. Uh, you know, and part of discernment is having experience and knowledge as well. Holy Spirit will give you knowledge. Uh, or uh, just worldly knowledge. Uh, the plain of Ono was 27 miles away from Jerusalem. 
on the very outer edge of Samaria and Ashdod, which were extremely hostile towards Israel. So they were leading, they wanted to lead Nehemiah up there to kill him. And without Nehemiah leading the city and the rebuilding and all that, Jerusalem would be wide open. Remember, Nehemiah is a type of the Holy Spirit. They're trying to lead the Holy Spirit out of man, out of you. <laughs> they wanted to, he wanted them gone so he can't control what's going on. So four times, four times, Simon Palat's like, come on, let's, get, let's work this out. Uh, but Nehemiah rightfully discerned that, no, man, he, no, I ain't going to do that. I got stuff to do here. Knowing that he, you're just trying to kill me. He used his discernment and the, to know the intents of the request. When those defenses are strong and the enemy can no longer easily harass you, he'll come at you sideways from a direction that you do not expect. That's why you need discernment. It's key to thwarting his plans to tear you down. 1 John 4, 1. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits to see whether they are from God. For many false prophets have gone into the world. Discernment is from the Holy Spirit. You have to have Holy Spirit and, and have a relationship with the Holy Spirit in you. You need to learn to hear His voice. You need to learn to understand when He is guiding and leading you. And that takes some practice. To know if it's his voice, or if it's the enemy's voice, or if it's your own voice, which in a way can be an enemy. Now we all know the accuser of the brethren. He is the accuser of the brethren. Nehemiah 6, 5-7 through seven. Then Sambalat, his servant unto me, in like manner, the fifth time, came to me with an open letter in his hand, wherein was written, It is reported among the heathen that Gashmu said it, that you and the Jews think to rebel, for which cause you have built the wall that you might be their king, according to these words, and that you have appointed prophets to preach of thee at Jerusalem, saying, There is a king in Judah, and now shall it be reported to the king according to these words. Come thou therefore, and let us take counsel together. All right, so Sambala, fifth time. Sends a messenger to Nehemiah. This time he comes with accusations and rumors of Jerusalem's impending rebellion and Nehemiah's machinations to maneuver himself to be their king. They even have the rumors that Nehemiah has bribed prophets to go out and talk to the people of such a thing. To endorse him to his ascension to king of Israel. Alright, so... When so many plans have failed, he's, like I said, he's going to come at you sideways. When he can't lure you away to destruction, when he can't come at you head on, he's just going to come any way he can. Going to try and trap you. Sound about sowing fear, and he's attempting to destroy Nehemiah's character. He's starting a rumor. You're going to rebel, and you're trying to become king. He's trying to assassinate Nehemiah's character. And he will. the enemy will come at you and do that. He will speak. He will work through people that will speak lies about you. I have it happen constantly. I get told by people, well, they said this, this, this and about you. I'm like, what? It, it, it's, it's character assassination. It's the enemy working through them to destroy your character so the people won't believe in you anymore. So the people won't listen to you. So the people won't believe that you are truly called of God. You know, Nehemiah was sent to restore God's order. Those rumors would have destroyed the people's confidence in him. They're, they're believing you're sent here to help us, to protect us, and to help us, you know shake off these horrible burdens, and here you are work, really working to rebel and become our king. That's what these rumors were saying. And the enemy started those rumors. 
when he has no power over you, he's going to send others to destroy you. Lie, cheat, steal, whatever he has to do to stop God's plan and will from coming to pass. Again, you need to have discernment to know who is there for you and who is against you. Because you're going to have, even, even Jesus had one in his midst who betrayed him. But he knew. He knew all along who Judas was and what he would do. And Judas was part of the whole plan to begin with. Now, you need to be aware of false counselors as well. Nehemiah 6, 10 through 13. Afterward, now after this fifth time, and he learned of these horrible rumors, Nehemiah goes to the house of Shemaiah, the son of Deliah, the son of Mathebiel. I have no idea how you pronounce that. I got it wrong. Who was shut up, and he said, let us meet together in the house, and, and, and Shemaiah says, Let us meet together in the house of God, within the temple, and let us shut the doors of the temple, for they're going to come to slay you. Yea, in the night they will come to slay you. And I, Nehemiah, said, Should such a man as I flee? And who is there that, being as I am, would go into the temple to save his life? I will not go in. And lo, I perceive that God has not sent you, but... You pronounce this prophecy against me, for Tobiah and Sambalot have hired you. Therefore, you were hired, and I should be afraid, and do so, and sin, that they might have matter for an evil report, that they might reproach me. Again, this working that, that entire character assassination to its fullest point. He didn't run when he got the letter. He didn't run immediately in fear. He goes and he seeks godly counsel. Let's say he goes to his pastor, Shemaiah. He's seeking godly counsel. But Shemaiah's already been bought off by Sambalat and Tobiah. He's part of the plan. He, he knows what to do. He tells them, go hide in the temple, lock yourself in there, because they're going to come and kill you. Go hide. See, what you don't, which many may not understand, for anyone other, it was forbidden in a great sin against God for anyone other than a priest or a Levite to enter the temple. Now, you can be in the outer court, but to go inside the holy place or the holy of holies, forbidden. The holy place was forbidden totally. Holy of holies, only the high priest could enter and only once per year, the Day of Atonement. So for Nehemiah, who was neither a priest nor a Levite, to go into the temple would be a great sin against God. Plus, it would show that he feared Sambalat more than he feared God, and that he did not truly trust God to take care of them. It would have totally destroyed Nehemiah's testimony. It would have destroyed his entire call. It would have destroyed his ministry there in Jerusalem. Totally. The enemy has always got plans within plans. And he rightly discerned, like, listen, no, this is not right. To go in and do that is wrong. Why am I going to run and hide? God, you're not of God, he said. You're not of God. You are of Sambalat and Tobiah. You are of the adversary. You're of the devil. He rightly discerned that Shemaiah was not of God. Shemaiah counsels him to hide in the temple. Because the nightfall are going to come and kill you. But he used that discernment and realized you're not of God. The enemy will not stop trying to destroy a saint of God walking in their calling. That's why you need the discernment. They're going to come at you constantly. From every direction. Even a direction you would not think of them coming from. Wives, they could come from your husband without him knowing. And Husbands, they can come from your wives without her knowing. From your children, without them really knowing. It's going to come. It's going to happen. Be on guard. Be prayed up. Be connected to Holy Spirit. Use that discernment. 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober. Be vigilant. Because your adversary, the devil, is a roaring lion. Remember, he's not a lion. He's like a roaring he sounds one, like one. He tries to look like one, but he's really not one. Walks about seeking whom he may devour. All right. I love you all.
God bless. Remember, use discernment. Use discernment. Get close to Holy Spirit. Learn His voice. Learn to listen. He's going to lead you and guide you. Use Him. Love you all. God bless.